Well, I'm going to share with you tonight um, something that I pray you've never had happen, and you never will happen, never will happen, but my guess is both are already true in your life, that what I'm going to share with you has happened, and I don't want to say good news, but it will happen again. So, aren't you interested in what I'm going to share tonight? So, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Now, I'm still taking a series on faith, but sometimes we've got to look at faith in a little different light. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, done that? You had not bought the T-shirt, have you? Don't, don't do that. Don't wear that T-shirt. Here's one of the amazing things to me about um, a lot of believers is they don't understand the fact that there will be trials in life. Well, I don't want any. Well, nobody wants them. Amen? But listen, don't think it's strange. Amen? Don't think it's strange. I mean, it's repeated twice as though some strange thing happened to you. I don't understand why it's me. I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, are you a believer? Yeah, there's your answer. There's your answer. Well, nothing's ever happened to me. Well, let me just talk to you about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Listen, listen to this very carefully. I love, I love um, one translation says, uh, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked when strange things happen with Problems, trials, difficulties. Don't be shocked. I love the Passion Translation here. Listen. It says, Beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult with many tests, don't be bewildered as though something strange was overwhelming you. Don't be bewildered by it. Don't think it's strange. Don't, don't be shocked by it. Now listen to me carefully, okay? Listen to this. If you read this in the Word, and we're going to look at it tonight from several different angles, okay? Listen to this. It is a pattern in the Word of God. Now listen to me. And it is a pattern in life that applies only to Christians moving in gospel ways that trials will come your way. Have you ever wondered why some of the things that happen to you don't even happen to the people in the world? Well, it's because they don't. Not like they do with Christians. It's not, it's, it's not natural what happens to believers. Can anybody identify what I'm talking about? It is not natural. Well, I don't want it. Well, you got one choice. Deny Jesus. Probably be a happy life. Won't ever have another problem. Probably that's not true. But, but the point is, listen, if you make Jesus the Lord of your life, then don't think it's strange. When you move in gospel ways, when you do anything for the Lord, or you make up your mind, I'm going to pray more, or I'm going to do something for God, or whatever it may be in your life, <clears throat> don't think it's strange if a trial or, or, or something tries to come against you. I mean, this is not one of those messages that you want to hear, but you need to understand it. It is a planned attack by the enemy which you can successfully overcome. 
And the more experience you have with this, the more successful you can be at overcoming it. But you might as well understand and realize it is something that will happen. I like one translation that says, as though some surprising thing were accidentally happening to you. It, it's, it's not an accident. It shouldn't surprise you. See, we look at it from the other angle. Well, God's good. God's good. Yeah, God's good, but the devil's bad. And when you want to, listen to me, when you want to, when you want to do something for the kingdom of God, whether it be going, be in a small group or start a, a small group or be involved with a ministry or any, I mean, it could be a million things involved with the gospel. You might as well understand that you're going to be challenged because the enemy does not want you doing anything. He doesn't care if you're a Christian as long as you're not doing anything. Don't bother me. I won't bother you. And you know what? A lot of Christians take that bait. They find out. They see, well, you know, I'm having something come against me. It must not be God. No, it must be God. It must be. And I, I learned this. Listen, I learned this early on when we started this church. That, that you might as well be ready for it. I mean, I, Becky and I were shocked, especially shocked at some of the things that came against us out of the clear blue when we decided we're to start this church. But it was a good lesson to learn. You'll find that sometimes you start, you do, do something for God, next thing you know, somebody you thought was your friend, they're not your friend anymore. They're speaking bad about you for no reason. Okay, but listen, it's not an accident. Don't be surprised as you though you think it was an accident. These things don't happen this way and pertain to the world and their actions. Now, they have their own. Listen, uh, it says over in Jeremiah, your own sin will rebuke you. Your own sin will correct you. So people who live in the world, that's the way they get correct. Their own sin corrects them. Everybody still with me? But there's a different level when you make Jesus the Lord of your life and you decide to do something for the kingdom or you decide to step up a notch. You know, maybe you were just kind of a quiet believer and all of a sudden you found out, hey, you know what? You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, listen, I just want to tell you, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, it'll be great, and at the same time, you'll have a battle. Amen. Anything you do is going to be challenged to some degree. So don't think it's strange. Don't, don't think it's some weird thing. It, it, it's not. But there is an operation of faith that we have to walk in in times of tribulation that can overcome that. But you've got to be ready to fight. Okay? And listen, I just want to tell you, what I'm sharing with you tonight, a lot of believers don't want to do it. They don't want to accomplish more. Because you won't get to the next level unless you do. What is that next level? I don't know for you, but I know God always wants more. Always wants more. Well, I just feel like I'm treading water. We'll start swimming. <laughs> so listen to this scripture. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, who's he talking to? Us. Count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, count it all joy. 
It doesn't say it is joy. You got to count it as joy. You've got to mark it down as joy. You've got to say, I will rejoice. You know, there are certain things that are just joyful. Amen? They're just joyful, like when your grandkids go home. (laughs) Well, when they're there too, one at a time. But when all nine of them are there at the same time, it's a joy when they go home. Come again. (laughs) Count it all joy. It's not joy. You have to count it as joy. Okay? But here's the problem. You can't count it as joy when you fall into various trials unless you know something. Notice the next verse, knowing. See, you can't count it joy unless you know something. If you don't know the next verse, it's going to be hard for you to count it joy. It's just going to be a struggle. I'm going to have to be joyful here. But if you know something, then you can count it as joy. Well, what do you have to know? That testing of your faith produces patience. Now, that word there, patience, you're not going to like it, is the word endurance. Yeah. Endurance. You have to, you, there are times in your life as a believer where there's just got to be an endurance there. You're not going to, you just got to stay with it. When I was, uh, when I was younger, uh, I used to race motorcycles. And we, I used to race in these races called Enduros. And they're as fast as you can go through the woods for 50 miles or 30 miles or whatever they determined that race to be, 20 miles. Most of them weren't that long. Some of them were. I didn't race but one of those. But, 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 and you go as fast as you can. And then you have to stop because you have, a, you have to be at a certain time, place at a certain time. It's an endurance thing. It wears you out mentally and physically. Well, you ha- there are things you have to endure. Endurance is not a pleasant word. It's a grit your teeth, I'm going to do it word. So if you know something, now listen to what it says that the testing of your faith will produce endurance. God wants you to endure. I'm going to show you tonight. He wants there to be a strength about you to be able to endure and to overcome whatever circumstance, whatever challenge you have in your life. That's what he wants. Okay? So listen to what it says in the next verse. Let patience or endurance have its perfect work. That means you've got to finish the job. You have to stay with it. You don't quit. You don't give up. You keep your faith on the line. You keep expecting. You keep fighting. You keep moving forward. You don't give in. You don't give up. But you don't know my problem. Listen. There is not a problem in this room that has not already been overcome multiple times by multiple people. There's nothing, don't get me wrong, there is nothing special about your problem. Okay? And so you can be patient, And it said, let patience have its perfect work. Now notice this, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. So if you know that, then you can count it all joy. That there's an end to this thing, and if you stay with it, there is a good end to to it. There's a good end to it. But you've got in the beginning... Count it all joy that knowing down the road 
There's going to be something that's going to work here. There's going to be some perfection here. There's going to be some completion here. There's going to be some work done. And listen to what it says. And let patience and endurance have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. But you got to start off counting it all joy, knowing. In other words, you got to know there's an end to this thing, and the end's good if you stay with it. Let me give you, this is an example that the Lord gave me years ago, and it just popped up in my head. There was a, there was a movie, uh, I don't even know when it was made, a long time ago now, uh, 30 years ago or more, uh, with Paul Newman and Robert Refford. It's called The Sting. Now, if you hadn't seen that movie, this isn't going to, you're not going to understand this, but if you have, you really will understand it, okay? So I went to see that movie, and the end of it is one of these twisters. It's one of these, I can't believe this thing's going to end like this. And all of a sudden, it doesn't end the way you think, and you realize, I got stung just like everybody in the, in the movie. Okay? So that's how I felt. So I went back to see it again with someone else who hadn't seen it. All right? So they're in there, they're intense, they're watching this, and they, you know, they think they got it figured out, and then all of a sudden the end. And the whole time, I'm just smiling. The, the, the word there, joy, actually means calm delight. I'm just smiling. I'm not getting, I, I, you know why? Because I already know the end. I already know the end. I like watching movies after I already know what the end is. It's more fun to watch them that way. You can relax, enjoy it. You know how it ends. I watch these Western movies over, over and over and over again. I know how they end. I, I like them, so I'll watch it again. Amen. So what you've got to understand here is that the trying of your faith produces something. Okay? It produces something. Now listen to me. Do not misread what I'm saying. God is not sending you trials to produce something. To make you better. I mean, I've, I'm so sick of hearing that. Because most people fail the test. And if, it's, if God's doing it, it'd be perfect. But the devil doesn't know whether you're going to quit or not. He's got to challenge you to find out whether you're going to quit or not. So the trying of your faith will produce endurance, but you've got to give it a chance to work. But when you do, I love what it says here. Listen, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. It produces a development in you, a maturity in you, because you do that. The Passion Translation says nothing missing, Nothing lacking. You don't get that if you quit. You don't get that if you quit. You only get that if you endure. If you stay with it. You don't quit. You don't give up. Well, but the Lord understands. He understands. He knows exactly where you are. But listen to me. If you don't endure, then you won't reach that place where you, you have, you're lacking nothing, where you're in, in a place where nothing's missing, nothing's lacking. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to be hard on you. Listen, there are lots of times I've wanted to quit. Lots of times. But there's just something in me. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. And I don't want you to do it. Because there's something better. There's something there for you. And it doesn't matter how many times you trip, you stumble, you fall. You get back up and you just keep on going. 
Man, when I was racing in those motorcycle races, I'd get stuck in creeks. I'd go up the side of a hill and it'd be slick and I'd have to slide all the way back down and go get another run at it. That's why he called it endurance. And, and the only way you're going to get to the finish line is if you don't quit. I remember finishing one of them with, flat, with two flat tires. You ever try to ride a motorcycle with a flat tire? It's, in the best of circumstances, it's not easy. I'm not bragging on me. I'm just telling you, you've got to understand that there has to be an endurance there. There has to be a, a pushing forward and don't quit, don't give up. Well, but you don't know what happened. Listen to me. It happened. Quit trying to analyze it. Listen, I, I could charge you for this tonight. <laughs> I'm telling you, I could charge you. Uh, Dr. Carr is in the house. I could charge you for this tonight. <laughs> all right, listen. All right. So, but, but let's look at it from a little bit different angle over in Romans. This will help you, okay? Romans chapter 5, it, it talks about the same thing, but, but let's look at it. Let's, let's look at it over here. And, and uh, I think it'll help you, okay? All right, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by what? Faith. Faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by what? Faith. Into this grace which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, I'd like to just stop right there and say, thank God we can have grace and we can rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and everything's fine. But you need to read the next verse. Okay? And not only that, but also glory in tribulation. Now, I'm not glorying in the tribulation, but I am not going to lose my glory toward God in tribulation. There's a big difference. We're not praising God for the tribulation. We're praising God in the tribulation. There's a big difference. And I don't want to, I don't want to scare you. Well, what's going to happen to me? Listen, if nothing happens, be happy. Don't be looking over your shoulder. Just keep serving God. But you know what? You'll one day you'll say, oh yeah, this is what pastor was talking about. Yeah, I, I see it now. All right, let me get back. Listen, notice this, okay? So we can rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, but not only that, we also glory in the midst of tribulation, knowing, there it is, there's that word again. You're not going to rejoice, you're not going to glory unless you know something. Okay? But if you know what I'm about to tell you, then you can smile in the midst of tribulation. You can smile when things aren't going right. You can look at it and say, yeah, but I know something. Yeah, 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 I see it. Yeah, but, but I know something. But what do you know? That tribulation produces perseverance. Guess what that word means? Endurance. Everybody still here? All right, all right, follow me here. Perseverance, it, tribulation produces perseverance. Now, how many of you know that that's not always the case? If you're not willing to endure, it doesn't produce that. But it ought to in us as believers, okay? And endurance produces character. Endurance produces Character. The word there, character, also means approved. It means to be approved. Another, another uh, definition of it is experience. You gain experience. See, listen, one of the things that I have gained over this 40 uh, some odd years of ministry, listen, is I have gotten some experience in tribulation. Woohoo! <laughs> Nobody wants experience in tribulation, but 
it's part of the life of the believer. And, and listen, let me just tell you this. Not everything that happens to you is the devil, but you, the, you, the same principle applies. You still have to fight through it and endure and not quit, not give up. But it will produce in you something. It'll produce experience, character, approvedness. One translation says, tried integrity. Tried integrity. God's looking for people that are going to endure. They're going to fight through. They're not going to give up. They're not going to give in. They're not going to find an easier path. They're going to fight. Endurance brings God's, God's approval in your life. And not only that, that approval, listen to what it says here, produces hope. Produces hope. Well, faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for. You can't have faith without hope. So it'll produce hope. All right, things are better. Things are going to get better. I know God's working. Listen to me. Patience is a force of the soul. And if, if, if you will understand that, that it, it actually, in one translation, I mean, one definition is steadfastness under pressure. Steadfastness under pressure. We all feel, listen, if you listen to somebody on TV and they talk about their life being just as easy, oh, there's no problem, they're lying to you. Either that or they're not doing one thing for the kingdom of God. Because there's going to be, there, there, there is a requirement in believers and we have to have a steadfastness under pressure or freedom for ch from change. And the root word there literally means to abide under. No fun, but it's still real. Because we know something, right? We know something, all right? The uh, uh, W.E. Vines Expository Dictionary of New Testament Word says this. The quality that does not surrender to circumstances or succumb to trials. That's where the Lord, is it a fight? Yeah, it's a fight. But listen to me, there's, there's fruit at the end. There's fruit at the end. That's, it's, that word, W.E. Vines says, is the opposite of despondency, and it's always associated with hope. It's always associated with hope. So there must be in the Christian's life on earth the operation of patience or abiding under. Too many Christians are moved away subtly by, uh, by the devil away from the will of God by manipulating them through trials. This church, now I'm not bragging on me, okay, or, or Becky, because listen, I, I'm just telling you a fact, okay? This church would not exist if we hadn't literally allowed, a, a, stayed under the pressure of what it took to start this church. I'm not bragging about it, I'm just telling you a fact. And there have been many more challenges since. But the point is, you start learning some stuff and you start knowing more and you know, all right, there's an end to this. God's going to do something. God, God's working. Amen. And by the way, don't, don't, please don't tell me this. You might want to tell somebody else and it sounds spiritual. But don't come telling me, well, you know, the devil must really know you're fixing to do something great if he's after you like that. The devil does not know God's plans. Amen. All he can do is get clues by your actions and your reactions. He's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. But he's been around a long time too. But here's the thing about, here's the thing. Listen to me. 
His arsenal has never changed. Okay? He hasn't come up with anything new. Everybody hanging in there tonight? All right. So, the, the, the enemy wants to move you away from the will of God by pressure from the outside. Pushing, listen, a lot of times it's pushing you toward an easier life. You know, listen, you go look at Jesus when he was tempted. You know what the devil was offering him? An easier life. A life that he wouldn't have to be challenged. Well, you're going to be, I'll give you the kingdoms. Just, I'll give them to you. You don't have to fight for them. You won't have to die for them. He, he didn't know that. He didn't know that Jesus was going to go to the cross or he would have never crucified him. He would have been able to manage the people around with Jesus on the earth to a certain extent. Do you understand what I'm saying? He didn't know or he wouldn't have crucified Jesus. He wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been the plan. But it was a done deal. Everybody still hanging in there? Still with me? Okay. So, when that pressure comes, trouble comes, tribulation, difficulties come, the enemy is trying to cause you to fall away from what God wants. So you have to, you have to fight back. You have to endure. You have to say, no, I'm not going to do that. So let me show you a scripture that, that will help you with this in, in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Don't have time to get into that, but it definitely is. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, enlightened is what that word means, you what? Endured a great struggle with sufferings. The word there, the word there struggle is fight. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproach and tribulation, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. It's interesting, listen, it's interesting that the enemy will come against you for two reasons. One, he'll come against you uh, because of what you believe and what you're involved in, in your own personal life. And he will also come against you for those you hang around. You hang around believers. You hang around somebody that's doing something. Just showing you the other side tonight. Yes. Amen. Okay. It says, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches, tribulations, partly while you became companions of those who were so treated, for you had compassion on me and my change. Now notice this. Joyfully accepted the plunder of your goods, knowing they knew something. How, how do you get joy? You know something knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourself. And it says in heaven, but did you know that's actually not in the original, in the Greek? So I don't know that we can't have, have it here. So notice, let's, let's just read on, okay? I want to read this. And I'll, and so listen, what, therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great Reward. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't cast it away because of pressure, by circumstances, challenges. Don't do that. For you have need of what? What's that word again? Endurance. So that after, what's that word? After you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You have to, listen, you want to do what God wants. You want to sing this song, I want to do your will, O oh Lord. Well, you better be ready for a fight. 
I want to change, Lord. I want more. I want more. You better be ready for a fight. I'm not trying to tell you. I'm just telling you I know the enemy. And the scripture tells us don't think it's strange. Don't, don't, don't think it's unusual. For you have need of endurance. For yet a little while he who is coming will come and will not tarry. But now the just shall live by faith. Now listen to this very carefully. And if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in them. Woo. I don't want to draw back. But we're not those who draw back to perdition. Y'all still here? We're not those who draw back to perdition. That's not us. That's not how we operate. We, we, we don't live that way. We don't walk that way. We don't talk that way. That, that word perdition there actually means destruction. But we're those who what? Believe to the saving of the soul. We're believers. We're believers. And so once you understand that, then God can do something. Well, what, what can he do? 1 Peter 5.10. Let me read it to you out of the, trend, the Passion. And then, after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. That's what we're after. But it comes through endurance. It comes through staying with it, not giving up. Don't get the whys, not the whines, the whys. Why me, Lord? Why this, Lord? Why is this, Lord? Why, why, why? Sound like a baby. Why? Crying. That's not what we're after. God will restore you. God will build you up. Now, I got to share this with you, and I, I, would, I, don't, I don't hardly ever preach this, okay? Hadn't preached, talked about this in years. But the Lord showed me something that really helped me understand why we need to endure. Okay, there, there, there's, there's more to it even than just us. There, there's more involved in the realm of the Spirit when persecution and afflictions come. Okay? L listen to, let me read you this uh, in, in uh, 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Listen to what it says. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your what? Guess what that word means? Endurance and faith. In all your persecution and tribulation that you endure. All right? So they had faith and they had patience in operation and they were enduring. But now listen to this next verse. Listen to this. Which is a manifest evidence. Okay? A manifest evidence. Evidence, that word means plain, a plain evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom for which also you suffer. Now listen to this. One translation says, which is a visible token of the righteous judgment of God. Do you know that when you, listen to me, when you endure when you stay with it, when you don't quit, when you don't give up, that you are a righteous token that God made the right decision? 
Yeah, there's my servant. Yeah, there's, they're enduring. They're fighting through this. They've got their faith on the line. They're not quitting. They're not giving up. That's a token. One translation, the Amplified says, they are proof positive that God's verdict was just. Literally, they were used as an example to the spirit realm of their worthiness of God's righteousness. You want to show yourself worthy? Stay with it. But I'm having so many troubles. Stay with it. It's a token of the righteous judgment of God. They were, they were being used as examples. Now, let me show you another tidbit here, okay? Listen to verse 6. Since it is a righteous thing with God to pray, repay with tribulation those who trouble you. Do you know that when, listen to me, when you are in tribulation, when you're in a trial and there are people involved, Maybe they're persecuting you. Maybe they're lying about you. Whatever that, whatever it may be, that you give God the authority because they're persecuting you and you're not quitting, you're enduring, that it gives God the liberty to deal with them. Now here it says that, that, that he can bring tribulation on those who trouble you. You might ought to read that to some people that are at. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Amen. I don't think they'd get it anyway. So, so, so listen, to, listen to this, okay? If you understand that, you understand that staying with it, enduring, don't quit, don't give up, keeps you in a place where God can use you as a token, as an example of righteousness, and then by that, turn around and use it towards someone else. I'm going to show you this, an example of this, okay? I'm going to show you an example of this. Do you remember Stephen in the Bible? He preached a whole book of a gospel message from Genesis to Revelations almost, or at least of what he knew. And they didn't like it. The Pharisees didn't like it. And, and he said, well, you're just resisting the Holy Spirit. And they picked up rocks and stoned him. There was a man there that day holding their coats. His name was Paul, Saul. We call him Paul. Right. Now listen to me. You need to hear this. Stephen was the first martyr. No martyr ever goes unavenged. Amen. Yeah. Ever. Any person who's ever died for the gospel, God, that gives God liberty to deal with somebody. Literally, Stephen's dying gave God the right to knock him off of that donkey and talk to him and call him and do everything that he, that, that he called him to do. Because of what Stephen endured. Now, if this goes over your head, just stick it in your back pocket and leave it alone, okay? So, the, do you understand? Because see, listen, if, if God could just do that on his own, and I'm not, and I don't want to parse words here, but if God could do that on his own, he loves the whole world. He'd do it for everybody. He'd knock everybody off their donkey. But he could do it to Paul because of Stephen. Stephen. 
So no, no tribulation goes unused by God, especially if people are involved in it. Now, I don't believe that it's God's heart to kill everybody. I don't believe that at all. But I also know that it gives him liberty to deal with people. You mess with one of my righteous, they're hanging in there, they're fighting, and now you've, you've messed with them, then I can repay. I, I can be the one to, to, to step in. I can recompense this situation. Have you ever noticed sometimes some of these people that you thought were the baddest of the bad that mock Christians, they're the ones that get saved? You know why? Because God, God has a liberty with them because of what they did. To a believer that wouldn't quit, that was staying with it. Everybody still here? Let me read you uh, uh, another scripture that will help you with this. Revelation 13, 10 says, For the one who leads others into... This is a passion translation. Sorry. <clears throat> For the one who leads others into captivity, in, into captivity he goes. The one who kills others by the sword, by the sword he will be put to death. This is a call, this is a call, this is a call for the endurance and faithfulness of the holy believers. If you'll be faithful, if you'll endure, there are amazing things that God can do. And I don't believe all of them have to do with killing. But let me tell you something. There was a reason that Paul spoke to Caesar. There was a reason. There are reasons why God opens a door for someone to speak to someone, whether they receive it or not, because it gives God liberty. He's not going to, because the Lord's not going to go contrary to, to, to their will unless they mess with us. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church all of a sudden. God has the ability to retribute based on the endurance of the saints. He's got that, he's got that ability. One, uh, let me, let me just read this to you real quick, okay? Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. Paul said in verse 12, I know, I want you to know, brethren, that these things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Sometimes we think about all the stuff Paul went through and we think, oh my God. But he, listen, the word there, furtherance, is a really, a really cool word. The, the word actually means to, to be a, a, a tip of a spear to make progress. So all of those things that Paul endured did not go in vain. They produced a pathway for other people to go. Listen, I just want to tell you, I thank God that there were, there were Pentecostal people who went before me before I started this church. Because let me tell you something. There was a day when people who were Pentecostal, who spoke in tongues, were run out of Shreveport Bossier. A good friend of mine has gone home to be with the Lord now, Buddy Harrison, started Harrison House. Uh, Talked talk to me about his grandfather and how he'd go into some of these cities around here and go into some of these areas and preach, and they would run him out. They would tar and feather him. Why do you think today it's so much easier? 
Listen, there's a church down the street, Life Tabernacle. I don't know whether it's still called that. But, but let me tell you something. They pierced. They made an opening in this city for the gospel, for the full gospel. And they did it with much persecution. Much persecution. So, so there, is a, there is another thing that is working. So when you endure, you're doing more than just making it to the end. You're actually like a spear pushing forward and releasing things for the future. Let me read Philippians chapter 1, verse 28. Listen to this. I'm, I'm finished. And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. For such constancy and fearlessness will be a clear sign, a proof and seal to them of their impending destruction. But a sure, here it is again, token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation, and that from God. 20th century New Testament says this, these persecutions will vindicate the justice of God's judgment. It is surely just the New English Bible, it is surely just that God should balance the account by sending trouble to those who trouble you. So you understand what endurance really does? Not only does it get you past where you are to another place, but it produces liberty for God to do things because of you. It's amazing. So here's my, here's my word in closing. You ready? Count it all joy. Count it all joy knowing. See, you know something tonight. You say, well, that just went right over my head. Well, go listen to it again. Now, I, I, I wouldn't share this on Sunday morning. But see, you're here. There's endurance we, we've got to make up our minds we're going to do that. Temptation and sin, it'll draw you away from what God wants for your life. No, you've got to fight that off and endure and go forward with God and with the things of God. You'd be amazed at what God can do. Amen? Amen.